it's Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. I hope everyone has had a lovely weekend. It is cold and dreary here in Texas for a Monday, but it's nice to be indoors with a blanket and the heater going. Now I am going to say I am wearing shorts and I do have my ceiling fan on, but I didn't say I was a genius. I just said I'm sitting here with a blanket. Now I just want to share with you guys something really, really cool and exciting that I found on Amazon. So if you're not aware, uh, Queen Margarita of Denmark has this amazing engagement ring. It is called a Toy et Moi ring. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce it correctly, but she has this amazing engagement ring with these two huge diamonds on it. For some reason, I've always been extremely fascinated with her ring, and one day I was scrolling over on TikTok, as you do, and this one ring came up on my advertisement for an emerald and pear-shaped toy et moi ring, and it was gorgeous. I became obsessed with it, and then I saw the price tag was almost $800, and I was like, ugh, I can't afford it. So I started researching online for something that was kind of a dupe for this ring, and you guys, I totally found it. So on Amazon, I found this company that made the exact dupe of this ring. It had the emerald cut and the pear-shaped uh, diamond. Of course, it is a triple A quality cubic zirconia in 18 karat gold over silver, which was very, very important because you want a high quality costume ring. Don't want it to turn green on me the first day I wear it. You guys, it was $17. I got it. I absolutely love it. It looks almost identical to this $800 ring. So I will put some photos of me wearing it. I'm obsessed with it. So if you're interested, it is in my Amazon storefront under jewelry. So if you're just looking for a fun right hand costume ring that's not going to break the bank, I'm telling you it is so cool and unique, go check it out in my Amazon storefront. But we have a lot of exciting royalty to share today, so you know what to do. Sit back and relax, grab yourself a beverage, and let's get into the royal daily tea. So Catherine, the Princess of Wales, has been talking about a brand new campaign and initiative that's going to be launched very soon. Now she took to Twitter to give out a teaser video about an upcoming campaign. Now we know that Catherine has been involved with the Early Years Foundation for many, many years. It says the Princess of Wales is promoting her new Earlyhood Childhood campaign, which aims to give generations of children the best start in life. Now the princess held talks with eight different academic advisors who represent neuroscience, psychology, prenatal psychiatry, early years services, and policy development at Windsor Castle on Wednesday. She said the team is dealing with, quote, big questions, big topics that are pretty complicated. So it seems like she's doing a lot of really positive work and really focusing on the early years and development of children. And I think that is so commendable and important. Many people do not realize the first three to five years how important it is for a child child. It really shapes them as a person. They learn social skills, emotions. That's why a lot of children who have problems who don't come from a solid foundation of love and support tend to have problems later in life. It's so important to get with children and get them early to teach them how to be responsible human beings, how to deal with emotions, how to deal with people, how to deal with society. It is so important to get with children in the early stages of life. And I love the fact that Catherine has definitely aligned herself with this initiative because I don't think many people realize the importance of early childhood emotional and social development. So Catherine, the Princess of Wales, was definitely the lady in red. She looked spectacular, and she can make a pantsuit look sexy. 
Her and William attended a very glitzy BAFTA event in London. Kate was there to launch her brand new Shaping Us Early Years campaign. It was a very star-studded event where many people from Hollywood, academia, music, sports were in attendance. Now, in a speech, Kate explained why she believes it is important to focus on children's social and emotional needs as much as their physical and cognitive ones, saying, quote, the campaign is fundamentally about shining a spotlight on the critical importance of the early childhood and how it shapes the adults we become. Are you listening, Harry? During this time, we lay the foundations and building blocks for life, and it is when we learn to understand ourselves, understand others, and understand the world in which we live. This is why it is essential to not only understand the unique importance of our earliest years, but to know what we can do to help raise future generations of happy, healthy adults. Those involved in raising children today need the very best information and support and this campaign aims to help do that by building a supportive, nurturing world around children and those caring for them. We can make a huge difference to generations to come because fundamentally healthy, happy children shape a healthy, happy future. This is amazing. Kate refers to this as her life's work and aims to increase public understanding of the crucial importance of the first five years of a child's life. Now, she does this through her Royal Foundation Center for Early Childhood. I am so excited for her. I think they're going to do amazing, amazing work. Now, you can just tell by the way that William looks at Catherine. He is just really happy and proud of his wife. And congratulations to Catherine, the Princess of Wales. I really do wish her much success on this very, very important campaign. So what in the holy heck is going on at Archwell Foundation. It is literally the mass exodus of employees, kind of like Moses leading the Jews out of Egypt to freedom from Harry and Meghan. Now, there was a report that came out that Harry and Meghan since 2018 have lost around 16 staffers. And in the past two years with Archwell Foundation, it has been a revolving door of highly paid, highly qualified employees who leave. Everyone quits or I guess, according to Megan, they're streamlining their marketing efforts, meaning they're cutting staff, they're laying people off, they can't afford them. Now, we all know after the Netflix fiasco, the person who was in charge of that has now left. We have Rebecca Soninis, who is in charge of Archwell Audio, where she basically threw Megan under the bus and said the high-profile hosts don't do the work, it's the producers. And we all know that poor woman worked really hard to give us what we got for Archwell Audio for Megan's archetype podcast where she did pretty much 90% of the heavy lifting. They just shoved Megan in a room and said, talk. You know what I mean? That woman did not want to do the job, but she certainly wasn't going to hand back the $20, 25000000 million. So now Rebecca Soninus has left. The person in charge of their Netflix series has left. Again, they can't keep good people because quite frankly, in my opinion, they can't afford it. It also doesn't appear that they have any huge projects in the works. So it seems like, why do they have all these staffers? What the hell are they doing? Exactly. You know, for a year and a half, poor Rebecca Soninus was arranging the paper clips on her desk because there was nothing to produce because there was no podcast. So it's obvious why she left. She probably had enough of Megan. So even though her archetype of podcast won the People's Choice Award for the best podcast in her category, it's very clear to us that it's up in the air whether they're going to have a second season. And I personally do not think they are going to have another season because Megan doesn't care about her podcast. It was a vanity project. It was the ABCs of Megan's victimhood, where she used every single episode to get back at the royal family. 
Again, ABCs of her victimhood. There just happened to be a celebrity guest sitting there for a whole five minutes, right? So I don't think there's going to be a season two. Now there's rumors that Harry was supposed to come out with his own mental health podcast, but that is yet to be seen. And we know that their second Netflix series, Live to Lead, was a total flop. Harry and Meghan was good for about two weeks, and then it tanked. It's not even on the top 10 anymore, and Live to Lead, definitely a flop. The only thing they really have coming up is the heart of Invictus, and I think that is coming out sometime this summer. But after that, we don't know of any other projects that they have in the fire. Harry and Megan are doing more in-house PR, in-house content creating, therefore eliminating quite a few of the staff members. Now, I know a lot of these staff members quit, but they also made a huge announcement that, of course, a lot of them are leaving. They're not fulfilling their contracts. They said they're streamlining their marketing efforts, meaning they're cutting corners and they're cutting their losses. So it sounds like there's a little bit of trouble over there at Archwell. Now, on top of that, we know that Harry's book Spare has dumped majorly in the ratings and in the sales. Now, again, they have received a huge amount of negativity and backlash, and they've become the laughing stock of Hollywood. And it's like Harry and Meghan had no clue this was going to happen. I don't think that book did them any favors, but of course, to counteract and do some major damage control, today we wake up to a 24 page manifesto the 2020 to 2022 impact report detailing all of the charitable efforts and contributions that were done by Archwell Foundation. Now, they only said that they donated $50,000. I believe last year is what they contributed or what the money they got. So I'm not understanding these huge amounts of numbers. But again, Harry and Meghan align themselves and take credit for the work of other people. So here are some of these stats that are reported in that 24 page manifesto. Supposedly, Archwell helped to raise 13 million, distributed 3 million in grants across a host of causes, including the vaccine equity, relief centers, and refugee resettlement. The foundation partnered with Global Citizen to procure 12.6 million COVID vaccinations and helped resettle over 7,400 people from Afghanistan and Ukraine. Again, Harry and Meghan did not do the heavy lifting, but lent their voice to these causes. Now, of course, in this report, they don't give actual numbers and figures for certain accounts. But according to Omed Scooby-Doo, he said that the couple donated 23% of their income. That seems pretty high to me, considering they only claimed $50,000 in donations last year. He tweeted, quote, in their first year of operation, they raised $13 million and distributed $3 million in grants. Again, we're not sure if the money came from them or if they clavered on to another company and took the credit. According to Harry and Meghan, they say Archwell is also spending money on, quote, building a better online world. It included cash donated to a foundation which provided an online guide for, quote, promoting gender equality for fostering positive masculinity in boys and men and aim to challenge harmful gender stereotypes. So moving forward, over the next year, you know, after they're done bashing the royal family and cashing those big checks, cha-ching, cha-ching, they're now going to focus, you guys, they're going to focus on three main pillars, and they are building a better online world, restoring trust and information, and uplifting communities. Ah, uh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> okay. Now, in their 24-page report, the Philanthropic Foundation describes how it, quote, helped procure 12.6 million COVID vaccines through their partnership with Global Citizen. Of course, they did a couple of appearances. They just did those speeches where they got that free 
first class trip to uh, New York City, where she had that whole $60,000 wardrobe over three days. Remember that? Where she handed out copies of her book and donated a couple of food boxes, right? Okay. Then they said they rescued more than 7,400 people from war-torn Afghanistan through a partnership with Human First Coalition. Again, I don't know exactly what they did or how they did it because they're not very specific. Putting a link on their website isn't exactly you doing the work, but again, they like to talk about collaboration. They dished out 50,000 meals through a partnership with World Central Kitchen, developed a resource guide embracing positive masculinity that's been accessed by 3,600 individuals. Yay, that's interesting who wrote, who wrote that. They built a playground for children of Uvalde, Texas after a gun massacre in a school last year that killed 19 young children and two teachers. So apparently they contributed to a, a playground. I don't know about that, but supposedly they contributed. They helped fund 13 academic fellows to address society's most urgent concerns surrounding social media at Harvard's Institute for Rebooting Social Media. Again, trying to keep their hands on freedom of speech. But again, there's no real facts or numbers what Harry and Meghan contributed, just that they collaborated. So I think that these organizations are the one who actually did all of the heavy lifting. Now, there is a gentleman who is singing, of course, Harry and Meghan's praises. He is the founder of the World's Central Kitchen. Now, Mr. Andres said, quote, Megan and Harry turned compassion into boots through their Archwell Foundation. He says, in a world where everyone has an opinion about people that they don't know, the Duke and Duchess have compassion for the people they don't know. They don't just opine, they run toward the struggle. Now, I find that interesting how he talks about how Harry and Megan are very compassionate for people they don't know. They're just not compassionate about their own families, right? They, they don't care that Thomas Markle almost died, had a heart attack, had some strokes. They don't care that his grandfather was clinging to life on his deathbed while they sat on the Oprah Winfrey interview and trashed them. They didn't care that his granny, the last year of her life, was battling bone cancer, and they certainly don't care for Charles, his father, or William as they continue to profit off trashing their family. So this compassionate duo care more about strangers on the street than they do about the people who have been there for them their entire life. Ain't that something? You know, that's called a narcissist 101. You know, they always say a narcissist is really nice to strangers on the street. They will treat people around them better than their loved ones or their significant others. That's how they trick people into thinking they're nice and they're charming because it's an act. It's fake. It's fakery. It's flattery. It's phony for public persona, for public consumption, to make people think, well, he was such a nice guy. I didn't know he was a psychopath. Of course you don't, because they're not going to tell you or show you their real self. They're going to put on a phony baloney act. That is what a narcissist does. So this man who is partnering with them, where they're pretty much taking credit for the work his organization did, sings their praises of how nice they are to people on the street, but yet they're not nice to their own family. I guess people overlook that, and I'm sorry, but in my opinion... If you're a crap, mean, awful person and you save a kitten from a tree, yeah, that was a nice gesture, but that doesn't make you a good person. You could put lipstick on a bow on a pig, it's still a pig. You can't dress up the fact that Harry and Meghan are not nice people. I'm sorry. They are bitter, bitter, angry people. They're spiteful. They're the type of people who will drink poison and want other people to die. Harry and Meghan are bitter. They talk about compassion and kindness and forgiveness, yet they don't do that with their family. And people see that. It doesn't have any substance if you're not walking the walk and talking the talk. If you're not doing that in your own personal life with your family, how am I supposed to believe anything you say? 
So I just find it really weird how they came out with this 24 page manifesto about how awesome we are. Look at all of the kind work that we do because we're so compassionate. We're so nice. Just like our love story is the greatest love story of all time. But the only thing I could think about is how Harry touches his todger and thinks of his mother. That's literally all I think about now, Harry, because you put that in my head. You ruined your reputation. So you could do all the nice things you want, but literally this is what people think about you now. You're todger. I mean, literally. I've never heard of that word before, but it's like my favorite word now. Todger. So I'm permanently going to have that in my head. It's like a nightmare. So this press puff piece that they're putting out is to counteract all of the damage control that his book has done. But that's all the royalty that I have for you guys today. What do you think of the 24 page manifesto that Harry and Meghan put out? Do you think it's damage control for their brand that is having a royal flush down the toilet? Leave me your comments, guys, down below. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and have an awesome and amazing day. Bye, guys.